The Primist presents How Texas is Becoming a Farmland Oasis. The state of Texas is located in the United States of America. It was admitted to the Union as the 28th state in 1845. Except for Alaska, Texas is the biggest state in terms of land area, occupying the nation's south-central position. The state is around 1,000 miles, or 1,600 kilometers long from north to south, and almost the same from east to west. Several of its limits are defined by water. The meandering Red River represents the eastern two-thirds of Texas's border with Oklahoma to the north, while the Panhandle juts northward, giving it a counterpart in that state's western half. The Sabine River comprises part of Louisiana's eastern border, although it is also surrounded by Arkansas. The crescent-shaped coastline of the Gulf of Mexico stands to the southeast, while the Rio Grande carves a shallow channel that divides Texas from Mexico to the southwest. The state of New Mexico lies to the west. Austin, the state capital, is situated in the state's south-central area. Texas is one of the fastest-growing states in the U.S., with a population predicted to increase from 29.5 million in 2020 to 51 million by 2070. Furthermore, the state is situated in a sub-humid to a semi-arid zone that is sensitive to water supply changes induced by global climate change. Texas is being impacted by climate change in several ways. These markers, which are based on biological, chemical, and physical impacts of climate, have the potential to be used to recreate variations in the Texas climate before the late 1800s. Although they happened at a considerably slower pace, the prior 20,000 years of warming and concomitant changes in precipitation may provide a good comparison to the predicted 21st century warming. During the earlier glacial ages, speleothem development rates in central Texas frequently rose, suggesting that Texas was wetter during these chilly climates. The formation of Texas speleothem surged episodically with the beginning of a significant glacial melting period that lasted from 14,700 to 12,800 years ago. This indicates that warming generates a short increase in moisture and emphasizes the intricacies of the Texas climate's reaction to global change. The change to interglacial circumstances heralded warmer and drier weather in Texas, higher extremes in drought flood cycles, and a dramatic drop in soil thickness. A collection of proxy-derived climate reconstructions shows that Texas was significantly warmer between 7,000 and 3,000 years ago, but with contradicting markers on the quantity of effective moisture present. Over the previous 3,000 years, warmer northern hemisphere temperatures have corresponded with drier conditions in South Texas. Albeit, this may be due to Atlantic Ocean variation rather than a direct temperature aridity link. As a consequence, Texas became a dryland state. Texas is actively working on many initiatives to alleviate the issue. Southern farmers are attempting to wean themselves off the Ogallala Aquifer, the water source that gave rise to industrial agriculture and contemporary life on America's plains. Cotton farming is only viable in West Texas, one of the driest sections of the nation, because there is water millions of gallons from wells sunk into the Ogala Aquifer, which spans from here to Nebraska. Water officials in the Texas High Plains regulate aquifer withdrawals to keep the farm-based economy viable. Texas is not alone in this regard. The state is merely one of the first to concoct the economic and social reckoning that some of the world's agricultural hotspots will face in the coming decades. Three-fifths of the 3 million hectares, or 7.5 million acres, produced in the Texas High Plains, the center of U.S. cotton production, are now irrigated, a 25% decrease from the 1974 peak. Students from several schools participate in forestation activities in which they plant trees. In addition, several forestation initiatives have been initiated in connection with it. 54,000 longleaf pine trees have been planted to repair a previously destroyed and damaged forest area. Longleaf pine was originally the major tree species in the southern United States, encompassing around 90 million acres from Virginia to Texas. For many Texans, it's quicker to purchase Cheetos, Twinkies, and Ho-Hos at a convenience shop than it is to get healthy fruits and vegetables from a supermarket. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, around 15% of Texans live in food deserts, which are defined as being more than a mile from a grocery store or supermarket in cities and more than 10 miles in rural regions. Hopefully, government programs will ultimately give new and existing farmers $25,000 to $50,000 loans. 
In many circumstances, this entails shared gardening. New farming technologies are also being applied to turn the dry lands into an oasis. Agriculture is a prominent sector in Texas. Cash income from agricultural producers is estimated to reach $22.8 billion in 2017, up from $20.7 billion in 2016. Agricultural production is related to many upstream and downstream economic activities. Many firms, financial institutions, and individuals are engaged in offering agricultural supplies, financing, and services to farmers and ranchers, and processing and selling agricultural commodities. The quantity and type of farms have fluctuated over time. Texas's agricultural population has declined from 420,000 in 1940 to 247,500 in 2018 with an average size of 514 acres. Although small farms are rising, many are managed by part-time farmers and ranchers. Farming is getting increasingly automated as new and bigger technology replaces manpower. Although the equipment costs more than in the past, machines are more technologically complex and efficient. Tractors, mechanical harvesters, and various cropping equipment have almost eliminated menial jobs formerly typical in farming. It will enhance the quality of life in Texas even more. Obviously, there are certain pros and cons to this. Greening the land will enhance precipitation in Texas while increasing the quality of life there. However, there was a distinct domino effect on the planet's general climate. If you like this video, do give a thumbs up to the video, and also, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more exciting videos like this. Till next time, peace.